Hi, I'm Jim, and I'm on a quest to create the most comfortable truck cap camper possible. I invite you to join me as I set out my priorities for this camper and then attempt to find a suitable solution for each priority. Once I settled on the idea of creating a truck camper, I started watching some great videos posted on YouTube by some very creative people. Each of the campers in the video seemed to fall into one of two basic categories. Some folks have focused on creating a hard shell tent where they dedicate their space entirely to a sleeping area and to gear storage. Other folks seem to have focused on creating a micro RV with living space dedicated to activities other than sleeping. The bulk of my camping will be in the late fall and the winter and I will generally be cold after a day in the woods so I set out to create a micro RV. My rig is a 2008 Ford F-250 diesel truck with a Lear 122 cap. The bed of my truck offers less than 38 square feet to work with, so I really shouldn't expect to fit in a lot of amenities, right? Well, I decided to create a list of priorities in order of importance to me and then to focus on each priority one at a time until I either came up with a solution or gave up trying. Here are my priorities. I want a solution that can be removed or installed from my truck in a half hour. I want a neat, uncluttered living space with everything organized. I want a comfortable permanent bed, not a convertible one. I want climate control. I want a toilet for nighttime use because I'm getting older and I'm really gotten to where I don't like having to climb out of the tent or the camper at night. I want a comfortable chair. I want the ability to sleep a second person. I want a functioning kitchen, a vanity space, an adult beverage bar, and a variety of entertainment options. So am I crazy or what? Do me a favor, don't ask my wife or my friends to answer that question. With this seemingly insane list of priorities in mind, let's go take a look at the camper and see how I did. I'll start by showing you what the inside of the camper looks like when I arrive at the campsite. This is pretty much what my rig looks like when I show at the camp. Everything is already in place and ready to go. You'll see in the back back there a little bin underneath the rocker, as well as some slippers, and then some clothing in the seat. Those are the things that I generally use the minute I get in the camper, so I don't put those behind doors because I'm going to use them immediately when I get in. My first priority is to be able to remove the camping elements from the rear of the truck within a half hour. I've timed it a couple of times and it takes just over 20 minutes to remove. The cabinetry on the right side comes out in one piece and is light enough that I can carry it by myself. The bedside comes out in three parts. My second priority is to have a neat, uncluttered living space with everything organized. Hopefully this picture conveys an uncluttered living space. Let's now look inside some of the cabinets to see if their contents are organized. We're looking now at the drawer that is the nearest to the tailgate on the bed side of the camper. That would be the driver's side. And what I've done is I've organized this drawer such that it serves three main purposes. First off, it serves as a pantry for canned goods. And as you can see as I move things around in here, you can put cans too high. So for an individual, it holds a good number of cans. Now to the right of that, beside that, we've got paper towel, paper plate, paper bowl storage along with a measuring cup that I use to microwave water for coffee and so forth. Then in the rear of the drawer, I have my pot and pan storage. So everything has a place and everything is in its place. And it is simple when I'm ready to go somewhere as closing the drawer, locking the tabs, and heading on down the highway. We're now looking at the second drawer in on the bedside. This drawer actually goes over the wheel well of the truck, over part of the wheel well. And as you can see, I have my cutlery dividers in the front of the drawer. And then at the rear, I have space to store spices. This drawer is under my cutlery and spice drawer. It is shorter from front to rear than the other drawer because it sits in front of the wheel well. This is where my cleaning supplies are kept. By the way, Figuring out the best use for those awkward spaces around the wheel wells can be pretty challenging. As we look now at the cabinet on the driver's side, closest to the front of the truck, and we go inside, you're going to see that there are currently two bins in here. 
This first bin has a change of clothes in case I need it, plus an extra pair of slippers, things like that that I might end up needing. I generally am carrying my clothes in the truck where I can carry them in and out quickly uh, to be washed when I get home. And then further back in, I have yet another binder. And it basically has dry goods, dry foods. So I've got cans in one place, dry foods in the other. But as you can see as I put these back in, they don't come anywhere near filling this entire space. There's still space in here for other things should I want to put them here. When we go through the remaining cabinets later in the video, you'll see that things are neat and organized throughout. But for now, let's knock out a couple more of those priorities. This is my bed. As you can see, I had a red and black comforter on it when I took this picture. I recently switched to one of my roomier sleeping bags because, as with any bed against a wall, the comforter kept sliding off of me while sleeping. The mattress is a 25 wide by 75 long mattress from Millard. It has four inches of memory foam and cost about $80 on Amazon. The reviews said it was very comfortable and I have found it to be surprisingly comfortable. Because the top of the mattress is almost level with the bottom shelf of the truck cap, there's an additional three to four inches of arm space to the right that really provides added comfort and makes the bed feel bigger. By the way, I set up my bed on the driver's side of the truck because I'm left-handed and I wanted my left arm less restricted. Because this mattress is 25 wide and my walkway is 28 wide, I can accommodate a second camper, yep, there's another priority, simply by removing the chair and putting down a second mattress. The person sleeping on the floor has even more cushion because of the padded bed rug that I'm using as my floor. Because this mattress is trifold, I can fold up the second camper's mattress and store it on the back seat of the truck when not in use. The fitted sheet that you see on the mattress is an RV cot size made for 30 inch wide mattresses, but my wife gave me some elastic sheet stays that have helped keep the sheet flat and comfortable. My next priority was climate control. When looking at options for heating, I first did some research on catalytic propane heaters. But because I've already had one close call with carbon monoxide poisoning, I just couldn't get comfortable with propane heat. Most other folks with Chuck campers are successfully using propane heat, by the way. As I looked at electric heaters, it quickly became obvious that battery-powered heating was not a viable option and that I was going to have to consider a generator. Because we live on the coast, we need a small generator anyway so that we can power our freezers during prolonged power outages that are possible after hurricanes. So I bought a small Honda generator. This picture shows the cabinet closest to the cab of the truck on the passenger side. It contains a small 110 volt heater and a Ryobi fan that operates either on 18 volt rechargeable batteries or on 110 volt power. Both of these and some other things that I have operate using my generator. My next priority was a toilet for nighttime use. Ta-da! Here it is. It's a Thetford porta potty that sits behind a cabinet door on the bedside of the camper. And by the way, it sits in front of the wheel well so it uses more of that awkward space. At night, I pull the potty out, spin it around, and put it up against the tailgate of the truck so I have plenty of room to get out of bed and use the toilet at night. My next priority was a comfortable chair. And this fireside rocker fits the bill beautifully. It's a very comfortable place to sit. It's lightweight and folds up to be easily moved out of the way. It is a rocking chair. And its seat height is at 14 inches, which means when I'm sitting in it, I can see out of all of my windows, so I have a great view around me, and I've got three to four inches of headroom above me. I take this rocker at night when I'm going to bed, and I turn it sideways, and it doubles as my nightstand. One of my priorities is a functioning kitchen within the camper itself. I do the bulk of my cooking outside on a gas grill and camp stove that I carry on my trailer with my four-wheeler. But on cold nights or when it's raining, I want to be able to prepare meals inside. My kitchen consists of a microwave oven, an induction cooktop, a very small sink and faucet, and a small cooler. Earlier in this video, you already saw where I store my pot, pan, and cutlery. I only use paper plates and bowls as they are quickly biodegradable and allow for cleanup with less water. Let's now take a look at how some of those components fit in my camper. 
In the lower right hand section of this picture, you can see where the microwave and on top of the microwave, the induction cooktop are stored for travel. The microwave sits in this place at all times and I move the induction cooktop when I'm going to use it. Here's a picture of the induction cooktop. This thing is too large to fit on the narrow counter on the passenger side of the truck. But one of the benefits of having a tri-fold mattress is that when I need more counter space, I can simply fold back my sleeping bag, fold the mattress back either, either once or twice, and I instantly have more counter space for things like this cooktop or to prepare foods if need be. Over the left side as you're facing it of the wheel well on the passenger side, I've installed a very small sink and a hand pump faucet. And I'm going to show you those a little more in detail. I'll move in closely here. I made a very small um, cutting board to fit inside of my little sink. This sink is actually a very small, it's either a one or one and a quart mixing bowl. I'm showing you the bottom down there. I've got the plug and the little drain in it that I had to cut and install myself. To give you an idea how small this is, I'll put my hand across it. And you see that my hand covers the entire sink. Next, as I said, I've got uh, a small faucet, a hand pump faucet. And the way you operate this is simply pull and water comes out. This is made by a company called Valterra and it is their rocket pump. I think this thing was maybe uh, about $45 on Amazon. I'm gonna go below briefly, and this will be a bit complicated for you to see, but I'm gonna go into the wheel well below, and as I go under, you see my plumbing. This is actually the plumbing right here. It goes right out of the wheel well uh, for my gray water, and that's, you see how close and narrow that is and how tight. That's why I used a shallower uh, and smaller bowl because I wanted a shallower bowl in the sink so that I could make the turn here without having to run uphill because you never want a drain to run uphill. Now what you see beside this is simply a container that I've screwed in that holds plastic bags that I use, those little grocery bags that I use when I'm out as trash bags. This is my drain plug up under the wheel well. It's the only hole of any real size I've had to drill into any critical part of the bed. And this is so that I can unscrew that little cap when I get where I'm going, keeping mud from getting up in there, and I can drain my sink. And I can drain it either straight out if I'm somewhere that it doesn't matter, or I can attach a water hose uh, to a container or a bucket of some sort if I want to capture my gray water. On the passenger side of the truck, still over the wheel well, but more towards the rear of the truck, I've got two main things going on here. The first is I've got a very small water tank that I use for my rocket pump to brush my teeth and to uh, wash cutlery and so forth. And then I've got a small vanity drawer. And the vanity drawer holds the kind of things you would expect a vanity drawer to hold. Toothpaste, uh, medicines, body wash, etc. And again, all of this is using that kind of almost wasted space up under the wheel. I've pulled back up my list of priorities uh, so we can see how we've done so far. Uh, if you look down toward the bottom of the page, one of the requirements was a vanity space. And we just looked in the prior video at the vanity drawer and the fact that it was located near the sink. I consider that my vanity space. So if we continue to look at the list now, we'll see down at the bottom, I've got two priorities left, an adult beverage bar and a variety of entertainment options. So now let's take a look at a couple of videos that show you what I came up with for those two priorities. We're now on the passenger side of the truck up towards the cab and here you see my little bar. It holds two different flasks, a small stemless cup that's suitable for wine or any other beverage, and then one tetra pack or three glass pack of wine. And this fits in here in kind of an interesting way. It can move back and forth, but it can't get out unless you stand it up and pull it out. And so it's just a simple way of keeping it in place and keeping everything near where I want it to be. And as I back off, you can see that's right by my chair. So when I get in in the evenings and I'm ready for an adult beverage, I don't even have to move to have one. My entertainment package consists of a 10-inch 
12 volt rechargeable battery powered if you need it to be supersonic television plus this tiny little Nintendo entertainment system based on the original Nintendo entertainment system that holds like 30 games and then you'll see on the shelf up above under the window uh, a jawbone jam box now to give you an idea of scale again I'm gonna put my hand in and you can see how small everything here is it's not very large but when you're in this confined space it is plenty large and provides just a tremendous amount of enjoyment uh, at night if you don't have anything better to do once it gets cold and you've quit sitting outside. Well, that pretty much wraps up looking at the priorities I had set for the camper. What I want to do now is spend just a little bit of time talking about power and lighting and how I achieved what I needed there. Uh, if you go back and look at the photo, the overall broad photo of the camper looking inside of it, you'll notice a couple of little stick-on LED lights up near the cab. I use those a little bit just for task lighting when I first get in, but I don't use them that much. Uh, I've also got a 12-volt light that Lear installs in the cab that I can use when I need more task lighting. But what I want to show you now is how I got my 110 set up uh, to go to my generator and my solution for a lamp. Despite having 12 volt power inside of the camper and having some 18 volt accessories, the bulk of the things that I'm using in there can use 110 volt power. So I've simply taken a power strip, tucked it up under the side of the camper, and then I've taken the cord, the power cord for this, I've cut the end, uh, the, the plug off the end of the cord, I've run it down through a hole in the cabinet, and then I took one of those holes that's already in the side of the bed of the truck. Uh, from the manufacturer and I've tucked that wire through that hole and down between the bed of the truck and the the rear quarter panel and I've installed a new plug and now I'll show you a video of what that looks like. Now we're taking a look at my power cord as it's sticking out from between the rear quarter panel of the truck and the liner of the inside of the bed and as you see I can take this now I've lowered it down and you can pull it out a good ways uh, and when the time comes you simply pull it back up out of the way and tuck it in up inside of the the bed of the truck. The last thing I want to show you inside of the camper is what I came up with for a solution for a lamp. I mentioned earlier that I have some other lighting in there that I use primarily for task lighting and that's because I don't like crazy bright or overhead lighting. I really like the soft glow and the ambiance that you get from a lamp. The problem I had was I had a narrow countertop and not a lot of space to put a lamp. My mother-in-law was getting rid of this particular lamp, and this lamp, when she gave it to me, had two little hooks over the back so that you could hang it on the headboard of a bed and use it as a reading lamp. I cut those hooks off, I sewed some Velcro to the rear of the lamp, and I was able, as you can see, to stick it to the wall here. I then took some uh, wire manager and some Velcro, and some zip ties and have secured the wire to the side of the camper uh, so that it can go down and plug in. That wraps up everything inside of the camper. The remainder of this video will focus on how I have set up the outside of my camp. If your camping scenario doesn't require you to haul a trailer with you, this section might not interest you. The image we now see in front of us is of my camp when fully set up. I use this setup primarily as a hunting camp. Because I have to have my four-wheeler with me, I have to bring a trailer. Since I have to bring a trailer anyway, I decided to use the trailer as a platform for additional amenities. My trailer carries the four-wheeler, two five-gallon jerry cans of water, a small cooler, a small six-gallon auxiliary fuel tank for my generator, a folding side table, a Weber Q propane grill, a propane tank, and a large DeWalt rolling toolbox. The DeWalt box stores a generator, a camp stove, an Ecotemp L5 on-demand water heater, a 12-volt water pump, and a tarp that I use as my awning. The following videos show how I rigged these items. By the way, once I arrive at the campsite, it takes me right at 30 minutes to set up the outside part of my camp. The awning is made out of a six foot by eight foot tarp 
and some half inch conduit that plugs into three quarter inch conduit that I've strapped to the inside of the trailer. I've then taken on the half inch conduit at the top, these little, uh, uh, little things that you screw into the, the conduit that have little pinch points and I put bolts in those little pinch fittings. I'll show you those later. And uh, I've used those to secure the tarp. And of course, then I've tied it here at the front. So it's in tubes at the rear and then it's staked and tied in at the front. I had said that I would show you a close up of how I've done the poles for my awning. As you can see, it's simple pipe clamps. The lower piece of pipe is actually three quarter inch conduit. And then the actual arm itself, or leg rather, is half inch conduit. And it goes all the way up here, and it's a five foot piece. It was very inexpensive. And then this is that little clamp on uh, fitting that I was talking about. It's designed, I think, to clamp and hold uh, Romex wire, maybe. Uh, but I used it and put a bolt in it backwards with the head in. And then as you can see, I've got a nut and bolt here. And all I did was space these poles to line up with the grommets on the actual tarp. The trailer not only serves as the foundation for my awning, but it also provides a place to put my camp shower. What you see in the picture here is one of those Wolfwise folding pop-up camp shower enclosures. What I've done is I, I've, I've put some legs on my expanded metal ramp on the back of the trailer so that it can stand out or fold out flat. I put my shower tent on top of that platform so that when I'm showering, I'm not in the grass or mud, but I'm on expanded metal and the water is flowing straight through. This is the Ecotemp L5 portable on-demand water heater. I have it hanging off of one of the legs to my awning it is powered by propane and it automatically includes a shower head which I simply insert through the back window of the shower enclosure. The water heater is in turn attached to a little 12 volt pump which you see in the picture here. I have this pump C-clamped onto the side of the trailer. The pump in turn uh, is connected by a water line to a pickup tube that I put in one of the jerry cans to provide water. This is a 12 volt pump, as I said, it has alligator clips and I have a 12 volt, 12 foot long extension cord that plugs into the back of my camper so that I can power my water supply when I need it. One added benefit of the way that I made these poles for my awning out of conduit is that the length of bolt that sticks up above the threaded part that sticks above the nut, once I put it together, gives me some interesting places to hang things that I need to air out or dry out, such as this uh, piece of ShamWow here that I'm using as my camp towel. The final thing that I want to show you from the outside of my camp is this simple lean-to that I made out of a tarp and some stakes and bungee cords. This tarp is here, this lean-to, to protect my generator uh, in case of rain. And it could be a very hard, bad storm, and the generator would still remain dry. I've got the front of the generator where you plug it in pointing towards the tarp itself and then the exhaust or rear of the generator pointing under the trailer. One unintended benefit of pointing that exhaust where it goes up under the trailer is when I sit in my chair on the other side of the trailer, the heat from that exhaust is blowing against my legs and during the cold winter months when I'm out hunting, this is a very, very nice amenity that I'm able to enjoy. Well, that pretty much wraps up everything I hope to show you. If by some miracle you've managed to stay awake during the entire video, thanks for hanging in there. I know that it's likely that your camping needs will differ tremendously from mine, but I hope that you found an idea or two that will help you to make your camp and your time in the great outdoors as enjoyable as possible. If you have any questions about anything you saw, please feel free to contact me.